Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 24th episode of the Language Mandarins podcast. My name is Jonathan, and today I have another special guest, my one of my uh, language exchange partners. Uh, his name is uh, Vadim Malik. So welcome to the uh, show, Vadim. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Nice to see you. So, nice to see you, as always. I think uh, I've gotten so used to talking with you every Saturday since uh, like July, August. It, it's been a pleasure to um, to be able to yes. discuss different ideas with you. Mm -hmm. Maybe from August, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, for people who aren't familiar um, with me or uh, with Vadim, uh, there's a, a, a language exchange Facebook uh, group and uh, that I started in July. And um, uh, I started to bring on uh, friends that I was making through the GoSpeaky platform. And little by little, the group started to grow, maybe 100 people, maybe 200 um, uh, last summer. and uh, one of the ideas I think uh, Vadim was very uh, helpful with was suggesting that we should organize some kind of a, uh, a chat or or Google Hangout or some Skype chat, uh, something like that on a, a regular basis. So little by little, we started to get into a regular routine. And so now we have um, uh, conversations on, on Saturdays and uh, um, so t tell me a little bit about your experience uh, with uh, uh, previous uh, language exchange experiences and, and language exchange groups. Uh, how, is, how has that worked out for you so far? Uh, yes, uh, maybe why I offer you to arrange this chat because I was searching for, for opportunity to speak for someone uh, for I think several years. Uh, I I don't remember when first I found some language exchange site or group. I don't remember. Maybe three, three or four years ago. And uh, my goal was begin to practice speaking because I uh, I was studying English for many years and just uh, reading, listening. But uh, I don't have opportunity to speak here where I live, I don't have partners here. And it's not very successful. I don't know why there are many problems. Uh, first of all, is my time zone. I always has, for some reason, always have this problem. We just couldn't arrange chat because it's my night or it's my partner's night or I'm on work. And even if we on weekend can arrange one chat after this uh, usually we uh, didn't continue and uh, your group is actually for first group when I had success with this uh, regular chats and I think I I make in progress it's would be interesting actually to listen I don't know Maybe we have uh, records from first chats. Yeah, uh, just, I think just compare. Yeah, I think that would be interesting. I um, uh, maybe I could go back into some of these uh, Hangouts videos from August, September, October, November, December, yeah. and see. Uh, and I, I, it's it's the similar experience. Like because I have kids, I don't quite uh, see how they're growing on a daily basis yeah. but whenever we visit family uh a couple of weeks a couple of months they're like whoa okay there's so much progress uh going on here so it, yeah it would be interesting i'll see if i can edit uh with your permission uh some of the uh some of the sections of the google hangouts maybe yeah. do like a little a time lapse uh or audio um kind of a time lapse to see some of your uh comments um in, in yeah. the hangouts, so would be interesting. I, yeah. mm -hmm. So, and uh, I think one of the things I like to see recently is that you and a couple other people in the group have started to form a regular daily study group. Can you tell me a little bit about that? 
Yes, uh, it's uh, it's a great thing uh, because yes, chat chats it's uh, key, but uh, first uh, weekly chat is not enough uh, for practicing. And uh, I was searching for some ways, and we discussed with you uh, what can we came up with uh, to um, more systematic practice, not. Uh, maybe not charts, but maybe other projects. And uh, actually this group uh, full of uh, creative people who create his uh, own projects, uh, come up with own ideas. And currently I participated uh, actively with uh, two of these projects. The first project is uh, uh, just uh, daily chats uh, when we studying uh, language using student book we're just doing exercises and uh, discussing and we have speaking practice and also we have uh, uh, we study grammar and all the things from student book and another great project is cross reading project by liliana uh, i like this project uh, it's it's very simple idea but i uh, I don't know why nobody do do this did this before. Very simple idea: just uh, just read book and send to to a partner, and partner comments, make review, and partner sent you his version of book, and you send review. Uh, there is two important for, things for me. First is is no problems at all with time zones. I I can record any any time convenient for me and send and uh, I I don't rush. I can review in several days when it will be convenient time for me. I can send review and I can wait for a week maybe for uh, my partner's review. It's uh, more flexible mode uh, of uh, communicating and the great part that uh, we using literature for studying mm -hmm. so we reading books and uh, when we don't have much time for reading books we, we this 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 is the way to combine this with language learning it's also great yeah oh. i i was just uh, speaking uh, yesterday with uh, Liliana about mm -hmm. and Alain about uh, their experience with the cross uh, reverse reading project and uh, and she was telling me that she was uh, working with between Russian and Italian uh, with you so and I need to be uh, a little bit more active with uh, with my Russian reading uh, with you so um, I can keep that up with the uh, Crime and punishment for the Dostoevsky. Uh, so um, it, it's great to have a partner who you feel comfortable with that you've worked with for a while, and then uh, once you build up that rapport, uh, then a lot of uh, creative projects are, are possible, and you each each person seems to invest uh, their time and invest their their effort. And I really like what you're saying about uh, with with the reading project to say that it's asynchronous in terms of mm -hmm. you don't always have to be connected at the same time, uh, which oftentimes with the language exchanges, the time zone differences is usually what kills it because um, everybody has a busy life in terms of work, family, studies, and sometimes trying to find the perfect partner, the, the exact level, uh, the appropriate level in the language, if they're a native speaker or if they're a study partner, and, and then also adding the variability of the time zones, it, it really just, it can, it can make it, uh, an exchange a bit difficult if, if each person is, is very dependent on Okay, when are you available? Uh, I'm not. Uh, oh, is your how's your availability this week? Oh, it's going to be different. So I think um, one thing I have tried to encourage 
people is try to figure out projects that where they they don't have to be dependent on the time zone. So I really like this idea that you can take a piece of literature, uh, read it when it's convenient for you, and make a recording, maybe five, ten minutes or so, and and then send it to your partner, and then they can review it when it's convenient for them. And just like an email exchange, but in this case, you have uh, a, a very focused uh, project where, um, yeah, you're 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 improving your reading skills. You may be uh, learning new vocabulary from literature. You're working on pronunciation skills. Um, you're getting feedback. So I think it's a really uh, a very great idea for. Um, yes, and, and uh, you you can have not only one partner. We yeah. have group, and we send we send all all stuff to group. And everyone now, currently, only Liliana interested in Russian, but maybe in the future, other people also interested. He can just connect and begin to also send his records, and I will review these records. So it it's in at any time new people may connect to this project to existing thread of reading. It's it's also great. Now, currently, we don't have much people there, but I think it's just beginning. Mm -hmm. And just, just yesterday, yesterday, one uh, guy from Pakistan, I think, uh, ask, was asking me for Russian, how, how I can help him with Russian. And I told him about this project. He's interested and maybe he's also connected to Russian study. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, yeah, I, I, that's one aspect I think I <clears throat> maybe maybe have overlooked when I was speaking with uh, with Liliana that the fact that it isn't just a a one to one possible oh, exchange. That yeah, it's great that it's a community uh, possibility because that's that's some of the things that I've seen on other websites. Like, well, with YouTube, somebody might post a video and you don't know when or who is going to look at that video eventually. Um, and also I've seen this with uh, Benny Lewis's uh, kind of the, the speak in a week uh, crash course in that he has an uploads uh, feed on his website so that people as they're learning a new language and trying to practice speaking, practice their pronunciation, they'll, they'll upload maybe a video to YouTube and then they'll put a, put a link in that feed, and then there's a whole uh, uh, discussion topics. Uh, so, or not discussion topics, but I mean the the discuss platform. So people can leave a comment under the video, mm -hmm. and you don't know when those people are going to see it, and then they can comment on it, give feedback, and so it's once you kind of open up uh, others like your writing or your speaking to a big public uh, or a community. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities where maybe I observe something and I give feedback, somebody else uh, hears something different and then they can also give feedback. And um, there's there's an expression like a an African proverb that like it, it takes a village to raise a child. I mm -hmm. think that's a very valid uh, insight for language learning, I think many times my experience has just been like you get a book, it's boring, or there's a limited CD that accompanies the book, and and uh, you don't get very far with that. But once you become part of a language learning community, and you are interacting with people from different ages, different countries, different professions, different insights, you you just you get like a team. Of people who are helping you and supporting you, encouraging you. So I really like the, the community aspect of the project. It's, uh, how we learned uh, before the internet. I remember these times. So what, what you speak? Some CD diff difficult to find, and uh, with some mm, strange phrases, not from no, not uh, not interesting not useful for you. And uh, when we had uh, DVD with uh, original sounds, 
it it was for me it was oh now i can't see any movie in english oh it's great and before we didn't have it but internet is for sure internet is a revolution in this uh, area and i think uh, this is why we have so much people now who can who want to study languages because because it's very easy now mm -hmm. you you don't don't have any problems with learning English there are so many ways to do it so many you have online courses you have these hundreds of language exchange groups and sites no problems at all and it it wasn't you know 15 maybe years be before it looks very different so yeah yeah. Great time. yeah i think these are some really exciting times to be learning languages and there are new projects that are that continue to develop um uh just today yesterday um uh i was getting involved more with uh signing up for the uh, add one challenge organized by uh, Brian Kwong and uh, a couple of days ago I spoke with him uh, for the podcast and he was telling me about the new um, th the 15th edition that's that's being launched uh, this week uh, for sign up and uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, another language learning group to see how that community uh, works and to see if that is going to help uh, continue to increase and, and develop my Russian. So uh, I, I definitely need to stay focused with my Russian and I need to practice more. And uh, I know you have been very generous to offer me whenever I, uh, whenever I can send you an email or send you a message or, yeah, sure. or the book. So I appreciate your support with that. So I just need to take you up on your offer more frequently. Yeah, sure. Ask me whenever you want about Russian. Mm -hmm. So it's my yeah. pleasure to help. Yeah, so I need to be more diligent with maybe writing emails in, in Russian or uh, with the with the reading project uh, to continue with uh, with with the crime and punishment and or with other short stories. Um, since one recording that I made. Uh, I had uploaded it to uh, VK, and then this generated a whole discussion of well, why do foreigners list, Why do foreigners want to read Dostoevsky? That's that's old literature, and then somebody saying no, that's a classic, and uh, and and I think you were help being helpful and saying no, no, stick with it, don't give up, and so uh, there's I think people could say the same thing if, if if one of my students was reading Charles Dickens and getting uh, finding it difficult to look at the vocabulary or the grammar, uh, even for me as a native speaker, yeah, uh, having to read some of the older classics, it is a challenge. Um, I, I, there is things that I don't know about British society, London society from 200 years ago. I, I have to learn something new just because I speak that language doesn't mean that I understand everything that's going on in that, in that, in that text. So, um, but it's an exercise like any other. Yes, one one thing I can agree is that's quite old book, and uh, the uh, it has some phrases and some words we don't use mm -hmm. now, and maybe it can be problem if 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 you remember these words and uh, you will will be trying to use this in uh, these words in conversation. It it maybe will sound very strange but uh, i don't know i don't think uh, this is only way to study yes mm -hmm. it's uh, it's only is if it's only way for you to study russian it's maybe not good idea to study this way but if you combine this with other uh, ways other courses or other um, projects I think it's okay. It's not so old. It's just mm -hmm. from 19th century. Mm -hmm. There is no strange things in this book you cannot understand now. It's actually uh, 
normal life, mm -hmm. I think. And um, in this conversation, uh, what I didn't like that uh, why they like Dostoevsky, it's, it's not, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it, uh, it was not about studying language, but about Dostoevsky. I think people like it, uh, like him, not because he's Russian, just yeah. because of his literature. Like mm. uh, uh, many people like, uh, I don't know, Elvis Presley, or not because he's American, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not American, an icon. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I think this is not right right way to uh, argue about <laughs> such people like mm -hmm. Dostoevsky. Mm -hmm. And uh, in in for your literature preferences, what uh, are some of your favorite uh, Russian authors? I like Dostoevsky. Yes, uh, this is why I I offer you to continue. I think if if we can finish this book, and we also have English version, you have right also right English version, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's a great book to read. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have much time. Actually, it's maybe not right, but I don't have much time to. to to read book, I, I'm trying now to read some books, but uh, I I have to uh, I want to have more time for this. Maybe project of Liliana will help with this. I will read uh, some great books uh, studying languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's likewise. I I, I have a lot of books uh, on on the uh, the shelves and uh, and. Uh, I'm, I'm picking up more and more projects, but uh, I think if I wanted, to, for example, to teach my children to find pleasure in, in reading, uh, they have to see me reading books. Uh, so I have to give them that example. And um, so it's it's difficult in, in this time with all this technology, with the computers, with the tablets, with the smartphones, uh, and and the TV with a video and so uh, one thing I remember when I was living in in Europe uh, with with France is that uh, people were, would read quite a, a lot and they would be reading several books a year or even uh, reading at least a book a month and so there were many bookstores that you could see in Paris and um, living in Mexico, unfortunately, I see a lot of advertising that says, like, please cultivate yourself, read for 10 minutes a day. Uh, so it's a complete contrast that uh, in terms of finding reading as a pleasure, uh, it's, it's a complete difference uh, in, in the culture. And so I think that might be some part of the public education system to try to encourage people to read more. And, um, and I think in the States, there's a balance. I think people do like to read. Uh, there's a lot of people also who like to do the books on tape or um, put a CD in their car just to try to interact with, with the books. But I mean, uh, audio books, right? Yeah, audio books, exactly. And yeah. uh, there are a lot of public libraries in, in the yeah. United States that are excellent. So um, I think it's very important that literature is is an important aspect to keep in uh, in a daily life uh, and also as part of a language learning uh, experience. Um, so, so I think uh, I like this project and and I, I'm definitely going to keep up with it. So, actually, in fact, I think as soon as we uh, wrap up this podcast, I'm going to go uh, do another recording for uh, for the uh, the crime and punishment. So. Uh, I, maybe I'll post that. Maybe I'll post that <laughs> with uh, this conversation if people are interested in hearing my my butchering of the Russian language. But it's it'll help me stay motivated um, and and stay focused. And and like you were saying with the with a community environment, if if you kind of if you allow people to uh, have access to the audio or the uh, they can give a comment and and give feedback. So, 
Yes, I agree. Literally, literature is an important part, and I think I read five minutes a day, but it's it's not enough at all. Mm -hmm. It must be more. And how is the um, public library system uh, in Russia? Uh, are there are there many? bookstores that people can find books and are there public libraries where they can uh, borrow books pretty uh, pretty easily uh, no no I'm using electronic books it's much easier to find and to uh, to get these books and yes we have sites here in Russia and uh, I'm also use Google Google, Google books I'm mostly uh, Mostly trying trying to read uh, English books because the, uh, this way I also practice in English. But uh, some Russian books I I get from Russian site like uh, Google Books mm -hmm. when you can buy electronic books and when they also have many free books. And, and uh, this book I sent you Russian version of uh, Dostoevsky. It, it was from this uh, library. It's, it's free. You can just download and mm -hmm. read. Okay. Yeah, I think in that case, I'll, I'll probably uh, include the link to if other people might be interested in uh, in, in Dostoevsky to find uh, other examples. And uh, so, yeah, I, th I think it's it's uh, it's it's great to be able to find books online, especially if you might not be able to find them locally uh, in, in, in the target language that you want to be reading. So uh, definitely uh, I would encourage people uh, if they are interested in literature uh, and they want to develop their reading skills in, in a, the target language, uh, make, yeah, go look online to see at um, different websites that offer uh, either free uh, versions of, of books, um, perhaps classics, for example, or other websites like Amazon um, or, or whatever is uh, a possible site in your language to, to look up books that you could buy for, um, that you could have on a tablet or on a computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know many people like uh, paper books because it's more traditional and they think electronic books is it's not uh, it's not book at all, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. For me, maybe due my profession, I'm a programmer, and I I was reading uh, mostly electronic uh, resources, articles, forums, and for me, it's for many years uh, reading from computer, it's it's uh, more usual than reading from some paper books. Mm -hmm. So this is why. For me, electronic books is completely okay. It's, it's much easier to read than paper mm -hmm. books. Yeah, I think as I look at my shelves, I see paper books, I see DVDs, I see CDs, and I'm thinking like everything is just becoming digital. Why do I have to have these books uh, on on paper, and why do I have to have uh, movies on uh, DVDs? I mean, it's it's all becoming more and more and more digital. So. Um, so yeah, I, I although I do preserve some of the books because I don't want my kids to be completely dependent on on uh, the digital technology. So it's it's a balance. But I agree with what you're saying of um, if if you're used to reading material on 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 a digital screen, then uh, go ahead and continue with that for the literature. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, um, so thank you very much uh, for for taking time to be part of the uh, the show and if people uh, would like to get in contact with you as part of the uh, the reading project with Russian or or language exchange how should they uh, get in contact with you uh, I think uh, easiest way is in Facebook group I also can send you my Skype and my email it talks okay. okay okay so I can include those in the, the show notes uh, with the, this podcast. And uh, in, if people are interested in taking English lessons 
with me or hearing more about my language Mandarin, so you can visit my website at hugginsinternational.com. That's H-U-G-G-I-N-S international.com. Or you can send me an email at hugginsinternational at gmail.com. So thank you very much, uh, Vadim, for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure talking with you as always. And I look thank, forward thank to our next uh, hangouts on the uh, weekend. And I definitely will try to uh, check out the study group that you take part in on a daily basis. And uh, I look forward also to continuing with the with the book reading project. So um, yeah, great. thank you. Thank for you. Inviting. Thank you. So thank have you. a good day and a good evening since I think it's almost it's probably late in the, uh, the night for you. And I'm just starting my day. So. Yeah, it's midnight here. OK. And uh, so, OK, thank well, take you. care Bye. and I'll talk to you soon.